now for our What in the World segment. What got my attention this week was the release of my friend and colleague Maziar Bahari from the notorious Evin prison in Tehran. Bahari is an award-winning filmmaker and journalist whom I've worked with extensively at Newsweek and who has also been a guest on this program. On June 21st, he was arrested in Tehran as he was reporting for Newsweek on that nation's strongly contested elections. During the almost four months he was detained, no formal charges were ever announced and he had no access to lawyers. He was put on, quote-unquote, a trial in August. As I said before in this space, it was at best a show trial like those put on by Stalin in the 1930s, an absolute mockery of jurisprudence. After posting bail last weekend, he was released and then later allowed to fly to London to his pregnant wife. Some say Maziar's release is a sign that the Iranian regime might be softening. Who knows why they finally came to their senses? What we do know is that the regime is under pressure. A suicide bomber struck near the Pakistan border. Five senior officers of the elite Revolutionary Guard were among the more than 40 people killed. Now, this attack was remarkable because it was against an all-powerful political and military unit, but more importantly because of its method. Suicide bombings are just not part of Iranian culture. The Iranian regime, of course, immediately blamed the U.S. and the U.K. and Pakistan for backing the attack. But the fact of the matter is, it is the Iranian people who are fighting this regime now violently. On the world front, after ignoring the international community's entreaties to come to the table on the nuclear issue for many months, Iran finally did. They even went so far as to reach some kind of a draft deal with the U.S., Russia, France, and the U.N. We'll see if they make good on their word this time. Now, others say Mazia's release was a humanitarian act by the regime. They wanted to make sure he was there for the birth of his first child. Fine, but please remember, this was a man who should never have been arrested in the first place. Furthermore, it is really impossible to use the word humanitarian when you look at the rest of the picture. It's estimated that hundreds of people, including 25 of Maziar's fellow journalists, remain imprisoned in Iran from the post-election crackdown. And most disturbing is this. The Iranians recently dropped a bombshell that was missed by many. Three people have been sentenced to death in connection with post-election protests. No charges have been specified. We don't even know their names, only their initials. MZ, AP, and NA. So to MZ, AP, and NA, and all of the others, I will say this. I am delighted that Maziar Bahari has now been granted his freedom. But I will not end my call for the Iranian regime to release all prisoners illegitimately arrested in the, in the post-election crackdown. If Iran wants respect on the world stage, it must respect the rights of its own people.